This ain't no priest in no booth. You need to hear from God himself. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, worship God, God until he tell you it's all right now. Thank you, Lord. Worship God until he tell you, I'm going to let you slide. Yes. Worship God until he tell you, I'm going to forget what you've done. You're going to get away with it. Isn't that nice? What could be ever more important than being forgiven? you got to be forgiven before you leave this place. Do you know what happens if you're not? Trust me with your, with your forgiveness. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. I appreciate you guys for coming. God is a miracle-working God, and he deserves to be worshipped. I will only worship him. I will only worship God, and I will bow down to none other. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Your flawed pastor and your flawed church. Y'all ready to talk about that? Want to talk about your, flat, your flawed pastor? Want to talk about your flawed church? The Bible does give us wisdom. And the, guy, the Bible gives us wisdom in telling us to beware of dogs, a spiritual predator. That's what a dog is. But when the Bible is talking about a dog here, he's talking about a spiritual predator who feeds off of other people. The Bible says beware of evil workers. The Bible also says beware of the concision. What is the concision? That's false circumcisers. Now, how would you verify that? How would you verify a false circumcisor? In the next few minutes that I have y'all attention, I want to answer a loaded question. Can a flawed pastor in charge of a flawed people expect an unflawed result? I want to be able to, I want to be able to answer that question tonight. How? How do you set up a service that will take a sinner that will take a sinner that would get a sinner to a person delivered from sin. How do you set up a church service so that that takes place, so that that happens? How does a pastor, a preacher, set up a service, like tonight, that would take a flawed person? How does a flawed preacher, like myself, take a person that joins that service from a flawed person to a delivered person? How does that happen? Does the songs that the choir or the praise team sing, does it help with that? Does the order of service, does everything that happens in your church service from the time that the church doors open, the offering, the musicians, the message from this flawed person, does it all align to help a person become unflawed? Does the Sunday school, this laying of hands, does baptism in Jesus' name, does touching your neighbor, does saying amen, does the audiovisual equipment, does the alignment, the way the pews are set up, the ch or the chairs, is all of that perfectly set up so that other people are a distraction to help get a person saved? Are we setting up the church so that a person can get saved? Should we strip the church down to the bare essentials? What are the bare essentials? Is it the message? Who's the message for? Is the message for repentant people or flawed people? Or do you have to have two separate messages? If your message is for an unrepentant person or unrepentant people, what message would you have if those same people or that same person come back to church next week? If you have the same message that you had last week for an unrepentant person, was that a fail? Did you fail? If you preached a message, if the choir sang, if you went through all of the normal church services, if you did everything that you normally do and an unrepentant person, if a sinner walks into your church, if they leave that church and come back next week and they're still a sinner, did you fail? Why didn't the message work? Why are sinners still sinners? If a sinner comes to your service, why are there still a sinner at the end of the service? If the choir sang, if the musicians played, if the pastor preached the walls down and walked the pews, and you're still a liar, what's the point? What was the point? If the church was set up to transform a flawed person to a delivered person, at the end of every service, 
Is it a victory to still have a flawed person? If not, what's the point? What is essential? I heard somebody one time as they were introducing the preacher. He was about to bring the preacher up. And they said, now it's time for the most important part of the service. I want to jar your mind with one question. Will there be preaching in the kingdom? Why preach to people that already made it? Right? Don't make sense. Was there always a need for preaching? Was there a preacher before Adam? Preaching is a temporary necessity. And it's not limited to the church. Preaching, although it's desperately needed, it won't always be necessary, but worship will be. Worship will always be necessary. That's what's essential. That's what's necessary. Worship predates this creation, and it will extend beyond this creation. And it will always be necessary. Before there was an offering, there was worship. Before there was a church, there was worship. Before there was preachers, to preach, there was worship. After the destruction of this present world system that we're in right now, the only thing that will remain is worship and worshipers. That's it. I'm trying to get you all to see what's essential. I'm trying to get you all to see what's important. I'm trying to get you all to see what the main thing is. This is what's essential. Worship. And that's where and why the church fails. The church must put the focus back on worship. I was at a four o'clock service. I talked to you about this the other day. It was a business meeting. The business meeting was, was supposed to start and they, after some congregational songs. After they sang some songs, it was a little bit after four o'clock, a backslider walked into the service. Sat down. Right away. Clapping a hand, singing the songs, praising the Lord. Right around 4.30. Time to start the annual church business meeting. Do you think the pastor said, let me put this meeting to the side and try to save a soul? Do you think he continued to praise and worship so that the person could be ushered into the presence of the Lord? Hmm? I watched that person get up, walk right out of the service, walk right out of the church, while the pastor continued talking about his stupid calendar and what days we're going to have this stupid annual woman's day. And the, that backslider walked right out the door. Guess what? Never seen her again. Never came back. That was the last time I ever saw her. What if worship was essential? What if worship was the main thing that day? The church must put the focus back on worship. The church must take the focus off the pastor. Who cares about your stupid matching robe? And why do you always show up late and interrupt the service? Y'all ever wonder? Service going on, praise is high, and we have to stop to introduce the pastor. He has to come in every Sunday late in the middle of worship. He can, why don't you get yourself in the pulpit before service starts and get your name off the church? Get your image out of the church and focus on God. The church must be in the business of bringing God a worshiper. Who's with me? The church must get back to showing people how to kill their flesh. The church must get back into the business of taking a flawed person and converting them into a worshiper. Why are our people, our people, our people, let's in here, our people, why are our people, why are our people so uncomfortable with worship? This is where we're lacking. We lack with worship. We got praise down pat. We got the best singers on earth. Oh, yes, we perfected the art of articulation of a language our ancestors didn't even know how to read or write or speak. We got hermeneutics. We got exegesis. We got all of this good stuff. We also got the highest crime rate in that same zip code. We got the highest poverty rates. We got the highest abortion numbers and the highest single family homes. These are the people that make up your congregation. And for decades, we got a lot of stuff. We've done a lot of stuff, but what we don't have is what God is currently looking for. What do you think God is currently looking for? We preach about cars. We preach about houses, but we fail to teach people to worship God in that car. Worship God in that house. Oh, God, if worship wasn't taboo. Can you imagine? Oh, oh man, if worship wasn't so weird. Can you imagine 
if worship wasn't out of the ordinary, oh God, if, 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 if you could just get rid of your pride for a few minutes and worship God, if you can just get rid of your pride long enough to worship the Almighty, the Almighty, watch this, the Almighty, all-knowing, omniscient God, He knows everything and He has everything, but He's looking for something. He's not looking for people that amassed a bunch of stuff. He's not looking for your triple doctorate degree in divinity. He's not even looking for a praiser. He got rocks for that, right? God is looking for a worshiper. His worshipers, those that made a covenant with him by sacrifice, those that want to serve him, those that sold out to sin, those that don't care what people think, the church must be able to set up and lure worshipers. Otherwise, what's the point? What's the point? The church must be able to create an atmosphere for worship. Otherwise, what's the point? I can stay home. What did I come for? The church must be set up to transform a sinner to a repenter. Because a true repenter, a true repenter can appreciate the power of God's forgiveness. If you truly repented, you owe God something. You feel in debt to him. God did not have to forgive you. God is sovereign. He does not have to forgive you. He saw what you did, and what you did, there's a, something written in the Bible that contradicts what you did. It condemns you, and God can send you to hell for every little thing that you did. If he forgave you, you ought to worship him. Yeah, yeah, a true repenter can appreciate the power of God's forgiveness. Yes, they can. You know what? Angels can't comprehend that. Did you know that? Angels can't comprehend it. The Bible says they wish they could see into repent. They, they want to know what that's like. Because when, that, when the angel sin, God says, you're done. Get out. When the devil sin, go. That's it. But when we sin, they wish they could understand how you can sin. Well, how you can choose not to worship God, first of all. Because that's what you do before you sin. You choose not to worship God. They're trying to figure out how you can do that. Because they don't have that choice. Then you can sin. You can live a life of sin. Repent and become a worshiper. They can't comprehend that. How could God love you so much? Why would God love you so much? You sinned. You messed up. You broke the laws. Because You know why? Because you and only you can worship God the way that you do. That's why the Bible says never judge another man's worship. You and only you can worship God from that geographical location that you're sitting in right now. That spot that you're taking up, that space on this earth that you're taking up, only you can worship God in that spot right now. Nobody else can do it. Only you can wave your hands with those unique fingerprints. You're the only one that got them. So when you wave your hand to God, that's only one person that can do that. Your voice is the only voice that can say hallelujah like that. Watch this. Hallelujah. Say hallelujah. Totally different voice. You see that? Only I can say hallelujah like that. Only she can say hallelujah like that. Only you can say hallelujah like that. And that's what God is looking for. He's looking for that. He's looking for somebody that's going to worship him. He's looking for a true worshiper. Your voice is the only voice that can sing a praise to God. If you don't praise him, the rocks will cry out. What if you don't worship him? Nobody can worship him in your place. Your worship is unique with your pain, with your heartache, with all the stuff that you've been through, if you can still muster up the nerve to worship God, if you got fire, you can still worship him. You could. Bad things happen to you as a child. It's horrible. But it made you the worshiper that you are today. You may not have enough money in your pocket, but you can. You, can, you could. You could worship him for being a provider. You can praise him when you get the stuff, but you can worship him for being the God of the stuff. I asked a question. I started off asking this question. How does a flawed pastor prepare to minister to a flawed people? How does he do that? He gets out of his flesh. He gets in the spirit and he becomes a worshiper. How does he set up a service to transform a flawed person to a delivered person? You 
know how you do that, brother preacher? You let them see you worship. Let the people see you worship. Let your con lead your congregation. Be the leader. Lead your congregation into worship. When was the last time you saw your pastor laid prostrate before the Lord? When was the last time you got lost in worship? How do you get an unflawed outcome? You worship Jesus. Easy. You, you are only flawed if you don't become a worshiper. You like that? Matthew talked about a woman that came to worship Jesus. Mark talked about a woman that came to worship Jesus. John is the only one that mentions her by name. But Luke, Luke said, a sinner came to worship Jesus. You see that? You ever notice out of all the things you do in life, people only remember the negative stuff? What do you do when your kid brings home the report card and they got straight A's in one seat? You focus right on the seat. Why? Why are we drawn to negativity like that? What is wrong with that? People, out of all these Gospels, they all talked about the same woman. One of them pointed out a sinner. Why? Hmm? Cook dinner for somebody every night. The one time you burn the food. The one time you didn't season it good enough. They'll forget about the thousand times that you did good. <laughs> people love to point out your flaws. And you know what else people love to do? They love to put you in a category. Why do they like to put you in a category? Watch this. Luke said, and behold, a woman in the city, which, which was a sinner, see that? When she found out Jesus was having dinner at the Pharisee's house, she grabbed her precious oils and she went to that house. The Pharisees thought this was a flawed woman. They labeled her. They talked about her. They put her in a category of sinners, but they wouldn't even speak to her. These are the religious leaders. These are the preachers. I wouldn't even speak to her. Imagine a woman. Imagine you being that woman coming with one purpose, one goal, determined, destined. Imagine a person that don't care what people think and don't care what people say. You can ask God for that. That's a gift. You can ask God to not care what people say, to not care what people think. God, remove me from the thought. My, remove my thought of what people think about me. Take it away from me. Help me to not care what people think about me. People will talk about you anyway. You'll never be able to please everybody. You'll never be able to please most people. Could you do what she did? Could you walk into a house or a church with people ready to judge you? They know your past. They got your dirt. They got the receipts. She didn't say a word. I like stories. Like that. She, went, she didn't say a word to them. You see that? You see how powerful it is to not care about what people think? She went straight to God. Didn't speak a word. She went straight into worship. She didn't say a word, but God heard her. Oh my God. She spoke volumes because she spoke his language. What's his language? It's worship. Yes, humans are flawed. But we can be holy in his sight. John 4, 3, 23 says, but the hour is coming. Thank y'all for listening. I appreciate y'all for being here. When is this hour coming? When is that hour? The scripture said, and now is when the true worshipers, notice it didn't just say worshipers, see that? True worshipers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father is looking, what is he looking for? What is God Almighty looking for? For a true worshiper to do what? To worship him. I want y'all to answer this question inside of your own mind. Is God looking for you? Are you a worshiper? Wait, are you a true worshiper? And is this the final hour? Because Revelation 11 1 says, And there was given me a reed, like unto a rod, and the angel stood, saying, Rise and measure the temple of God. This is New Jerusalem, this is heaven coming down to earth. It says, Rise and measure the temple of God and the altar, watch this, and them that worship therein. Why is God saying to only measure or count the worshiper? Why is God only concerned about those that are worshiping in there? If the kingdom of God, if, if, if the God of heaven is coming back for everybody, why is 
the angels instructing? Why is the instructions not to be concerned about the people outside? But he's laser focused on the worship. Why? This is the end. This is the final hour. This is where God is coming back. Look what he, he, he's already looking for worshipers. And he's coming back and he's only counting the worshipers. Everybody else don't even matter. How do you live your life? How will you live your life if you're not a worshiper? Mark talked about a woman named Mary that came and worshiped Jesus. Matthew talked about a woman named Mary that came to worship Jesus. Luke talked about a sinner named Mary that came to worship Jesus. And behold, a woman in the city, which was a sinner, when she knew that, Jesus sat at meat in the Pharisee's house, where Jesus did eat meat, sorry, vegetarian, and stood at his feet behind him. Look what she did when she showed up. She stood at his feet behind him weeping and began to wash his feet with tears. Who knew that was considered worship? And did wipe them with the hairs of her head and kissed his feet and anointed them with the ointment, the precious ointment that she had. She didn't say a word. Can God find the time to be worshipped in your church? What space of time in your church service from the time they open the doors to the time they close it? Can God find his time in there to be worshipped? Is there worship time in your house? What time do y'all worship in your house? Don't answer. Now when the Pharisees, these are the ones that invited Jesus to dinner. He spake within himself. He didn't, he, he, you didn't know Jesus is God? You didn't know Jesus can hear what you're saying in your mind? He created your mind. He spake within himself saying, if Jesus was a prophet, ooh, you invited him to his house and you're talking smack. He said, if Jesus was a prophet, would have known who and what kind of sinner, what kind of woman this is that toucheth him. Listen, and what kind of woman this is that toucheth him, for she is a sinner. You see this guy? See how folk are? They want to continuously bring up your faults. They want you to always be in remembrance of your flaws with your bad lining. They get mad at you if you try to get help. This woman tried to get help. They want to continuously bring up your faults. They want you to be in remembrance of your flaws all the time. You're trying to get your life together and they mad. You're worshiping God and they mad. You had God in your house and you did everything but worship him. You came to church and you did everything but did you worship him? You went to bed and you did everything yesterday. You did everything you needed to do. But did you worship him? Did y'all catch what the scripture said? It said, this woman touched him. See that? You see that? A sinner touched God. Then what happened? First of all, how do you touch God? How do you get far enough in the spirit that you touch God? You got to ignore people. You got to set time aside. You got to separate yourself. You got to be determined to get in his presence. You got to ignore people when you need help. What would the Pharisees have told this woman to do to get her sins forgiven? What would they have told her to do? What instructions did they have for her? They didn't have any, they didn't have any, any words for her. They ignored her. Still mad. What's the process that your church has set up for people to get their sins forgiven? Is there a process? Is there a process in your church? I bet you there's a process to join the church. Show me that in the Bible. Book, chapter, verse. I need the book, the chapter, and the verse for the process to join the church. Because it ain't in there. You're on your way to church this Sunday. This Sunday, you're going to be on your way to church, right? And the church will tell you to get baptized in Jesus' name. Great. That's good. They'll tell you to come to Sunday school. Great. They'll tell you to come to Bible class. That's great. They'll tell you all the do's and all the don'ts of life. But be honest. When you were told the plan of salvation, did they tell you the most important thing? Why didn't they tell you what God is looking for? Why didn't they tell you that God is looking for a worshiper? Why didn't they tell you that God is looking for somebody to worship him? So here comes Mary. Mary washed Jesus' feet with her tears. She dried them with her hair. The Bible says she never 
stop kissing his feet. She anointed him with oil. That's good. She worshiped her God in front of everybody. <laughs> Despite everybody. Jesus said in verse 47, because of that, because of that, I'm telling you, he's talking to everybody else, the folk that was talking about it. He said, her sins, that y'all want to keep bringing up? Her sins, which is a whole lot, a whole lot of sins. Her sins, all of them are forgiven. What about yours? Your sins forgiven? What about yours? She had no words, but God spoke for her. He spoke to her enemies for her. She said nothing. She said nothing. But God put the smack down on her enemies. Shut them up. She worshiped God and he defended her. He's the God of vengeance. He showed up and took care of business. You didn't have to say nothing. Just worship God. And he'll take care of all of your enemies. He'll destroy them before your eyes. She worshiped God and he defended her. When he was done giving him the smoke, he finally had something to say to her. Can you imagine God turned to you after he just put the smack down on your enemies? And he said to her, listen, Mary, all the stuff you've done in this life, all of your secret sins, all of the stuff that people will try to condemn you of are forgiven. This ain't no priest in no booth. You need to hear from God himself. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, worship God until he tell you it's all right now. Thank you, Lord. Worship God until he tell you I'm going to let you slide. Yes. Worship God until he tell you I'm going to forget what you've done. You're going to get away with it. Isn't that nice? What could be ever more important than being forgiven? You've got to be forgiven before you leave this place. Do you know what happens if you're not? It's what in the world is more important today than getting forgiveness from God? What happens if you don't wake up tomorrow? Do you have an answer for that? We all know. You don't want to talk about it. We don't want to say it. If you don't become a worshiper today, what happens if you don't wake up tomorrow? What could be more important than being forgiven? Listen, I'm not perfect. But I promise you I've been forgiven. I promise you I've been forgiven. That's all that matters. I promise you I've been forgiven. I had many flaws. And I got a lot of flaws. But I found out the main thing is the main thing. Worship God. That's it. That's all that matters. That woman didn't do nothing but worship God. Nothing else matters. Get your sins forgiven in this final hour. Get in God's presence, y'all, before it's too late. Why y'all still sitting there listening to me? Why y'all still listening to me? Why aren't y'all worshiping y'all God? If you never hear my voice again, touch Jesus. Now there's no condemnation. Yeah. Let folk talk. I've been forgiven. I don't care what you say. God already forgave me. So what? Run your mouth. Bump your gums. When I stand before the Lord, I'll see his face in peace. It's going to be all right. You know why? Because I'm a worshiper. I'm flawless. God is looking for me. And I got favor. I got protection. I got the victory. I got peace. I got power. I got Jesus. Hallelujah. What else can you do? What else can you do when you have the master? What else can you do when you got Jesus besides worshiping? That's all you can do. You can't do nothing but fall flat on your face when you're in the presence of an almighty God. And you know what? Sickness cannot dwell in the presence of a God. If you Listen, if you're sick and you have a problem, you have an ailment in your body, I dare you to invite God into your house. Because listen to me, sickness cannot dwell in the presence of a holy God. It's not possible. Worship God, get lost in worship. Take a vacation and worship God. Push your plate back and worship him. And give him his glory. He's a God of forgiveness. Give him glory. He's a God of restoration. Let him have the best part of you. Take one moment and don't seek anything for yourself. Don't ask him for nothing. And give God what he wants. Glory, glory.
Give God what he's looking for. Give God you. That's what God is looking for. Why are y'all still sitting there listening to me? Worship your God. You know how you worship him? You start off by saying, Lord, I'm sorry. I messed up. I might have broken every law in this book. I might have done everything in here and I admit it. I'm a mess. I'm flawed. I'm a piece of garbage. I'm a piece of dirt. But I know who to go to. I know who to run to. I know who got the answers. And I know you're forgiving God. I know you're merciful. And I know you got power to forgive. You have power to take my sins. And cast them into a sea of forgetfulness. You'll do it for your own sake. You'll do it so that you don't execute judgment on me. You'll do it so you'll let me slide. You'll forget about everything I've done. All the nasty, low down, good for nothing stuff that I've done. That I think nobody knows about. But you recorded it. You wrote it down. It's sitting in a book waiting for me to stand before you. And I'm going to stand there. There's going to be people standing before the Lord. And they're going to stand there until they admit that God is holy and righteous for not letting you in. Just based on the stuff that you did this year. You did enough stuff this year. And you haven't gotten forgiven for it. And you think you got time. You got plans for today. You got plans for tomorrow. Because that's what's important. Right? What if there's no tomorrow? Who promised you the sun's going to rise? Who told you the sun's going to rise tomorrow? Who gave you the guarantee that tomorrow the sun will rise and God will not come back for his worshipers? He can't wait to get his worshipers in his presence. He can't wait to come back and get us. I told y'all, he's saddling the horse. You can hear the footsteps. If you listen in the spirit, he's coming back, y'all. He don't have no more time. The river Euphrates is already dried up. What else do you think is going to happen? That's the sixth trumpet right there. The seventh trumpet, God shows up. Here I am. Where my worshipers at? Count them. Don't count the ones outside. Don't count the ones that's not worshiping God right now. Count them worshipers. That's who I'm coming for. That's why I told you to count them. Hallelujah. Everybody. It's hard. Because worship is taboo. It's hard. Worship is making us uncomfortable. There's something wrong with us. You know what that something is? This nasty, low-down, filthy flesh that ain't going nowhere. This flesh is not going anywhere, so it doesn't care. It wants what it wants right now. And what God wants, your flesh don't want. Your flesh doesn't care. Your flesh won't burn in hell. You ought to close your eyes right now and say, Jesus, I'm sorry. In your own words. In your own way. Lord, forgive me. Give me one more chance. And I'll show you, God, that I'll walk up right before you. I'll show you, God, that I'll live holy. I'll obey that book. I'll do everything written in that book from this day forward. I won't sin no more. I won't think like that no more. I'll separate myself from people who won't worship you. That's what I'm going to do. That's what I'm going to do. Y'all ought to do that. Y'all ought to talk to God and tell him that. You ought to talk to God and tell him that. What you going to do? You know how many people are going to have excuses on judgment day, you know how many people are going to stand before the God and say, but God, but I did this, but God, I did that, but I'm too young, but I didn't have enough time. And God is going to say, but the book said, you are not forgiven. The, the angels didn't measure you. You're not a worshiper. What do you want me to do? God is just and he's sovereign. He, and he's so awesome that he warned you. He warned you. He's warning you right now. He's so awesome. Look how much time. Look at the space of time he's giving you. Get it right. Set yourself up. Get it right. Change today. Let today be the last day. Let today be the last day that you're a flawed person. All you got to do is worship. You ain't got to be perfect. You just got to be a worshiper. Hallelujah. That's all you got to do. All you got to do is be a worshiper. Thank you, Jesus. You know what happens when you become a worshiper? Watch this. After your encounter with Jesus. After your encounter with Jesus. After getting forgiveness. After worshiping him. Read this again. Tell me if y'all catch this revelation. Read what, read what Luke said again. And behold a woman in the city. Which was a sinner. Yeah, 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 yeah. Was 
A sinner. Why is she past tense a sinner? Yeah. Now she flawless. What you got to say now? I'm enjoying my best life. Oh, by the way, John called. He said, her name is Mary. He got her name right. I challenge you to be a past tense sinner. Be a past tense flawed person. Be was a sinner. And move forward with God. I appreciate y'all for coming. I appreciate y'all for listening. Worship is always in order. Y'all can continue worshiping God all night. Y'all can continue worshiping. I encourage y'all, don't go to bed tonight until God has forgiven you. Don't go to bed tonight until God has set you free. Don't go to bed tonight until God said, it's all right. I believe you. And I hear you. I hear you. Let God hear you. Let God hear you. Talk to him. You can talk to him in your own mind. You don't have to have any special words. That's what I like about God. He speaks all languages. And he put the voice inside of your heart. He put the voice in your mind. He put the voice in your spirit. Talk to him with that voice. The word sorry is easy. It's only, it's only hard if you want to continue doing what you're doing. If you want to continue living a life of sin, then it's hard to say I'm sorry. But if you tell God I'm sorry and you mean it, God will fill you with the Holy Ghost immediately. God, that's why he's looking for a worshiper. Because when he finds one, he steps right into your body. Just like that. Boom. Filled with the Holy Ghost immediately. But you got to want him more than you want your life. You got to be willing to give up your whole life. I don't care if I go live under a viaduct. I just want to be forgiven. I don't care if I lose my job. I just want to be forgiven. I don't care what happens. I just want to be forgiven. I just want to be set free. I don't want this life of sin anymore. And I don't want to serve the devil anymore. And I don't want you, God, to be mad with me when you come back. I want to be counted. 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 I want to be kind of, come here, baby. Come to me. Come to me. Run to me. Run, run, run. Come quickly. Come quickly. Thank you, Jesus. 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 Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Bless your holy name, Jesus. You're so awesome, God. You're magnificent. Ever. Thank you all for coming. Thank you all for coming. I appreciate y'all for coming. I'll see you all next Friday. We also have Diaspora teaching on Tuesdays. Thank you, Jesus. Click that. Um, yes. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Father, the come to this child. Watch over her and protect her all the days of her life. Deliver. In the name of Jesus. Set her free, oh God. In the name of Jesus. Get your hands off her in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Say you cannot have this one. Get your hand off of her in the name of Jesus. She's covered with your blood, Lord. I cannot have this one. I feel the blood, God. Lord, do me a favor, God. Save this child. Do me a favor, God. Mark this child, Lord. Save her now. In the name of Jesus. 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 Say it in your heart. Hallelujah. Save her. Deliver her. Have your way, Lord. In the name of Jesus. Have your way with her. The devil desires to sit you like this. He wants to destroy your life. Whatever thoughts and plans that you had this week, cancel it. Let it go. It's not going to work out. It's going to be your demise. It will destroy you. Don't do it. You hear me? Don't do it. You know what I'm talking about. You hear me? Don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do it. You might think you can get away with it, but God sees you. Don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do it. Help you God. We'll help you. We'll be all right. You have a good support system. Your parents love you. We love you. I will do anything for you. Change your mind. Don't do it. Okay? Lord, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord.
Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. No, 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 no. She shall live. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. She shall live. I declare she shall live. By my spoken word, she shall live. The blood of Jesus is against you, Satan. Who's here? Loose your whole devil. Loose your whole devil. Thank you, Lord. Mm. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Father. Move, move, move. Thank you, Jesus. Move. Thank you, Father. God. Turn loose the blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Be free. Be free. Be free. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Go in peace. Thank you, Jesus. 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 